Uh, I, I, you I, have I to. bought multiple ones. Yeah. CryptoPunk NFT owners. CryptoPunks, it's gonna be huge. Nine CryptoPunk NFTs sold for $17 million. Some people like CryptoPunks. CryptoPunks are a series of 10,000 little uh, pixelated characters that were- There's probably not an investment I have that I'm more confident in than CryptoPunks. Visa purchased a CryptoPunk NFT for $150,000. CryptoPunks are 10,000 generated profile pictures. They were created by Larv Labs on Ethereum as free mints. They were experimental, non-fungible tokens. The first PFPs to have an artificial rarity with no duplicate artwork. And that's the story, right? Not quite. It's true what they say about history. It's written by the winners. But fortunately, that's not how it works in Web3. The CryptoPunks history begins on the blockchain, not by Larva Labs, not by Yuga Labs, not by the owners of punks. The story is in the ledger. The history starts with the code. And it's complex, it's nuanced, and incredibly interesting. So let's go back and paint a clear picture of what happened with CryptoPunks. What was the beginning? See, after a week of minting, even before the full 10,000 were claimed, a small but critical issue was found in the smart contract. The protocol to place CryptoPunks on the market and to sell was encoded correctly. So people were able to purchase a punk with ETH, then execute a withdraw command and receive the ETH back they paid. Essentially, whoever was buying a punk also got their money back. And that means the seller got zero. This issue was in one line of code. Hemba, an early punk claimer, discovered this exploit, used it, but eventually returned more than 30 punks, including the extremely rare and historical V1 CryptoPunk number 6487. This was during a time when ETH was about $300. So while it's not much at the time, it was a legitimate concern. Owners were then warned not to interact with their punks until the issue was resolved. On June 17th, 2017, Larva Labs alerted everyone through a tweet stating, CryptoPunks alert, do not sell your punks. Found a bug that means you will not get either from the sale. Trying to figure out options. We're working on some options. The whole thing has been totally crazy. The bug is that purchase price is held in the contract for the buyer instead of the seller. So no money is lost, but seller doesn't get it. So what now? In the days following, Larva Labs issued a new smart contract. So let's go back on the timeline here. The old V1 contract was submitted for verification on Etherscan, June 17th, 2017. The new V2 contract was submitted for verification on Etherscan on June 19th, 2017. So within about a couple of days, a new contract was submitted for verification. In this new contract, the bug was removed and bid functions were added. On June 23rd, 2017, Larva Labs re-minted all the punks and airdropped them to owners. All 10,000 V1s and V2s are identical, but now both are in the hands of holders. The crypto punks we see today, the ones with the blue background, are V2s, the official crypto punks. But remember, while they're official, they're not the original. The original crypto punks, or the V1 punks, are the punks with lavender pink backgrounds. But what can we learn from this story? At least up to this point, we can learn that officiality and originality are not the same and they aren't mutually exclusive. V1 CryptoPunks are original based on blockchain history. V2 CryptoPunks are official based on Larva Labs and Yuga Labs brand and story. This beginning will lead to many interesting conversations on what it means to hold value. In other words, is value derived from something objective like time and place or is it speculation and based on our subjective agreements. I hope to dive into these questions and use V1s and V2s to help us understand and perhaps estimate the value of historical NFTs, any current NFTs, and those that come in the future.